So anyway, I guess any thoughts on Goofrog Magman? Like, other um, than Magman's probably going to have a really tough time breaking in. Something specific, uh, Google you know? Frog is in excellent form right now. He's at the top of the ladder. Oh, actually, no, we're going to be doing Sponge and Veil Dots first and looks at it. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> Magman's going to have would have a really difficult time with that. I think um, Sponge Veil first is going to be a, a much more even game. I expect Google to take this tournament. But there's some stiff competition. A lot of it depends on people being specialists in sniping Google Frog's fat strategies, knowing how to beat his air starts. But Google Frog, I mean, there's a few things that he does because he likes it. You know, he enjoys the strategies. He, he sort of like, he likes to practice them. But he has a huge range. Well, I, like, and so they, and so he should, or so they should, because come on, they're the main game design, or one of the main game designers. They better yeah, have it. He's been playing for a very long time. <laughs> Almost as long as me. Okay, and we're going to be getting on to the game. I remember to switch over to the game this time. Don't worry about it, though I did it a bit too soon. I forgot to set up my UI slightly first. But anyway, yeah, this is going to be Blue Bend. So if this map does not look familiar, there's a reason for that. I think I think I may have casted it once, maybe. But it's, as you can see, a rather uniquely set up map for start boxes. South and East. Not really the best map, I don't think, for 1v1. It does work for 2v2 fairly well, but 1v1... I tried it earlier, and... Don't try Cloaky on this map, I can tell you that much. Or if you do, it's really kind of tricky. If your opponent's gone on the northeast side of the map... Yeah, good luck with that. This is a very flat map. I mean, you have a, a, small, a few small bumps, but uh, the ridges there are not really... <laughs> they're not really usable in most cases. Yeah, that's a few of them are, but that it, it since the ridges you can see the the direction they're in, they're actually diagonal to the enemy. Mm -hmm. So they just create funnels for you to go at the enemy rather than creating blockages that you need to go around. So they matter a lot less than you might think. So yeah, really yeah this way. is a very flat map and but you see the sponge has actually gone for Cloaky while Failthos has gone for Hovercraft. So indeed. Although, one thing I would point out is the hills, particularly the one in the southwest, are great for wind gens. The one in the northeast, there isn't enough room to really make it worthwhile, but the one in the southwest, you could put easily 20 wind generators on there without having them next to each other. And that's a huge amount of power. I think the minimum power on that is like 1.4 or something. Can't yeah, even actually. the small little ridges um, next to the bases here are uh, just but putting a line of wind generators on. I mean, and in, in like really big games, maybe there's not enough room. Uh, put that many wind generators up there. But the truth is, in a small volume versus one like this, you're not going to run out of space that quickly. Yes, yeah, so that's one advantage that Felthos has right now, given the map geometry. Although the sponge... Uh, yeah, the sponge going for Cloaky. Although, admittedly, Felthos is in a slightly less defensible position, and both players are fairly forward. They're both towards the southeast corner, meaning that the sponge will have... Well, the shorter rush distance, which gives the sponge less of an advantage... Or less of a disadvantage. Less of a disparity between the rush timings. Ooh, he sees an excellent micro from Faelthas's um, uh, oh, yeah, that is... dagger taking out. Well, oh, there's just too many glaives there. He took out one uh, glaive without sort of taking that much damage. Ran there past them, ran around them, did a loop. It was it, it was nicely done, but um, yeah, in the end, um, the sponge has gone very heavily for raiders, while yeah, um, uh, Faelthas is doing a, a, is more, much a, a slower, more expanded. Uh, uh, Faelthas is responding, I think. I mean, look at the daggers coming in here. I, th yeah, that's. That'll work, I think, with the micro that Felt has shown so far. Although, the sponge continuing to push forward, and I think the problem here is the frontal assault. These glaives should have gone around the back, but nope, they are going around the front, and the glaives are going to take them. Sorry, the daggers are going to take them out. The glaives are going to take out one dagger, but the glaives do not last. Actually, not even taking the one dagger. The one dagger survives with one health. The remaining two daggers chase off the glaives, and that's going to basically be it. That attack did not no, go no. anywhere. That was foolish. I mean, if he had radar at all, and his, um, that wasn't going to work. He had his commander in position to interdict. Uh, it was a, a very heavy. Yeah, the sponge said, "What a retarded move!" Obvious defense, and I still attacked. So yeah, he he knows that that was a really bad idea. That, that was a poor. But read. he is, uh, Felthas is expanding, uh, forward though with his commander and around the side with his constructor, while the sponge is taking territory towards the back, which might give him a bit of an advantage if because it'd be harder to raid. But he has yeah, a large army advantage right now. I don't know if it's going to be that big of a difference because I mean it'll come down to swing. It's 
If these daggers die, then it will swing, but right now, Failthaws just has the advantage of keeping the pressure on Sponge. At this point... Yeah, and plus he's doing the that. slow defense creep thing with just leapfrogging um, uh, defenders. Mm -hmm. And the defenders are enough right now that what forward expansion there is is not going to be defend. It's not going to be blocked too easily. Although, admittedly, yeah, the hover can't go through to the southeast side of the map, and the Tailthaw still has the southwest. And of course, there's the center that hasn't even taken by anyone yet. And now the dagger's coming in here to punish the expansion, daggers. punish everything. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they're going to punish that expansion hard. There's no defenses whatsoever. This hasn't been blocked off well enough, and Failthaw is going to take this. Pretty heavily. We're oh, probably just right out who's playing. Yeah, that is going to be a big problem. That was devastating. Going around the back there. I mean, taking out the 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 back of the base was all right, but he knew well enough that he could not stay in the base. He's faster than the cloak bots. He can't. He doesn't want to engage the Lotus Tower, even though he could kill it. It's not worth it. So he went to the back, found the constructor, took out all the metal extractors, and now he's solidly in the lead. And, well, the sponge figures the only option is a counterattack, which is going to run into an obvious defense once again, or maybe not quite so obvious, but going to run into a defense once again. The sponge, okay, not going to run into it because the sponge has radar and actually knows there's something there. If they've been they've been watching the game so far, they should know that Veltos is going to opt for a lot of defenses. Veltos has been doing this the entire time so far. Every game that Veltos has played has been heavily defensive, and focused on taking that center. Actually, not the last one so much, but definitely focused on defense. That's when yeah, and you can also see that um, there's a warrior in the back. Um, it's still trying to keep the the, uh, the daggers. There's still four of them alive, wandering around the back there. So. The sponge can't easily um, re-secure the, the territory that he's lost. And Failthos... And oh, losing, no. Yeah. Three glaives go down for absolutely nothing. Failthos has very much secured this base. If it's going around the back, there's the only thing. If the glaives, they have to go around the ridge. And then the... Oh, wow, this is really clever. So the glaives have to go around the ridge in order to raid properly. The daggers just spot them. Or they go around the other side away from the defenders. The daggers spot them. Failthos has set themselves up perfectly to avoid basically any rush. The only possible option is to go north and then go south from there behind those daggers, and that would take way too long. The sponge needs to get his warrior in position to deal with these uh, daggers, and once he's killed up the daggers, he can start raiding again. But oh, and Felthos... The, the four in the north come back in again. Speaking of... Okay, I was mentioning before Felthos had bad multitasking. I think Felthos is just tired, because right now Felthos <laughs> is going for perfect timing, spotting that warrior out of position, goes in right at the same time with the daggers in order to basically continue raiding. Not that there's anything to raid left, but... Still, good good plan. I mean, definitely the right thing to yeah. do. It, he saw the warrior earlier uh, up on the hill and, and just retreated back from it, knowing that he couldn't go in there. But he knew it was... A, he, he guessed, I suppose, that it was the same warrior and that, it, that he could then just sweep out the back. And, and that was perfect. Even though this didn't get anything, this, this sweep through the back, he knows he's not expanding there. And just having that pressure there and having that knowledge that he is in the lead gives him a lot more confidence to then just sort of sit back and continue to take, expand himself. He's now taking the area behind his big defense line. Mm -hmm. He's locked off that area between the river and the cliff. So now he's taking all the, the metal extractors behind that. And that's basically the map, the entire map at this point. And the sponge has no territory influence except maybe the northeast. And even then, those, those daggers are making it way too difficult. Glaive's coming in to do nothing, to die a valiant death against the daggers. And the, the daggers, warrior's the he only... He has enough now that he could, he could he sniped one of the warriors. He went in yeah. there and he, he just he just sniped it. He just he, they only lost two daggers uh, against the warrior, which is actually um, making cost. <laughs> not so only once that, you get enough daggers, because they're up front damage, you can snipe right but, units. Yeah, and not only that, I mean, not just making cost, we consider the failed house as one and a half times the economy of the sponge. Making cost is, even if it was slightly less than cost, Veldos is still ahead. So the Sponge right now, trying to consolidate. However, they do have a lot of, rec they have some reclaim to work with. The reclaim here is probably close enough. Not a lot of metal has been donated to Veldos, and none of it has been taken. So right now, the Sponge does have that in order to try to pull back. And if those daggers are destroyed, I think that Veldos will be able, sorry, the Sponge will be able to reclaim at the Northeast. And the daggers just forced to retreat, but at least that is keeping some of the territory open. That keeps Failthos from being able to completely run around rag or run the sponge ragged. Can't run around with impunity. The sponge at the same time hasn't actually started to take the northeast. That's the problem. 
And this- oh wow, Failtoss going for Frontal Assault on top of that. And the daggers are going to be flanking around heavily to the northeast. There is a warrior in place though, so Failtoss won't be able to quite handle that as well as last time. Let's see if they're paying attention Yeah, though. I, I think part of this is, um, is the strength of Hovercraft on a big wide open map like this. He's, um, uh, the sponge is having a lot of trouble. Uh, he's he's saying, even saying in chat that he's having a lot of trouble dealing with um, the power of Hovercraft here. I think you might have been right a little bit about that uh, Cloakbots were not the best choice, but a lot of this has been excellent execution. Excellent. Oh yeah, I mean, Felthos has... I, well, excellent execution and some... There were a few read mistakes by the sponge and really good reading by Felthos. I mean, Felthos is completely on point with pretty much every decision they've made so far. And the sponge... Yeah, um, Felthos has finally lost skill. some of his... He's finally blundered into a warrior and lost a lot of his daggers in the north. But this is at the same time that he, as his scalp and two maces yeah. took out a lot of the expansion. So I don't think at this point he that's could, a big he could afford problem. to have finally made that blunder with his raiders. And the thing is, at the same time, this sponge, like the thing with Cloaky, I could see it working if you win in the first five minutes, or at least break your opponent somewhat, really knock down their economy. That raiding becomes extremely key, and because that ran into an obvious defense, it didn't work. The Glazes are actually doing yeah. a decent job trying to push back these maces, though, but even then, that's a lot of Glazes going down to this. Like I said, yeah, those maces, though. Losing, I'm he's losing off. more than he can afford to, really, with these economic disadvantage. Um, Failfuss has almost taken his entire side of the map, his entire sort of uh, quadrant, his start box, at least. And that, While um, that's uh, the sponge on three nexes plus his starting three, so. And no extra not even that, constructors for reclaim. Because, I mean, that reclaim area right at the southeast, that's still. 500 metal or so. Get a couple constructors on that, and that'll get parity for... Or not quite parity. It'd be like six constructors to get parity, but still. Put that on there, and at least there's some way of getting back in the game. Yeah, that, he's, yeah I nope, think it's too, not yeah, happening. He knows he's too far behind. No, nope, we're going on to game two. The sponge... The sponge just going for the game two strategy. I mean, it is best two out of three, so the sponge still has a chance, but Failthaw's definitely showing that they just... They can just read... <laughs> Just got right into the sponge's head. Yeah, it was excellent micro, and he won the Raider game, which allowed him to, with his style, he just plays Raider game with the um, uh, with a lot of defenses to prevent the enemy from ever using Raiders against him, so that he doesn't need to use his own Raiders defensively. He can continue to harass. He can keep them around the back. Like he, he dived his Raiders straight through, his dagger straight through, and they just kept harassing around the back, which is not in a position where you can intercept. Uh, an attack from the enemy at all. I mean, no. if, if if the enemy has a, an attack force to come in, you, you know, all you can do is counterattack, which you know is, is alright. But if the enemy has defenses set up, you know, or warriors set up as he as he did, um, th 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 those units are essentially useless. But because he had the, he had the huge defender line in the middle, sort of locking up that center of the map, um, he didn't need to worry about a counterattack at all. Uh, and it really came down to the Sponge's mistake of running those glaives in early, because you need versus daggers, you need to not let them snowball. You need to not let them build up a big critical mass of daggers. So you need to keep your own rate of force alive. You need to keep your own critical mass going. You need, need to be to able to sweep out the sides with them and Yeah, keep their economy down. Like, I mean, that's yeah. the thing is Felthos, Felthos had free reign to take that south center and then go from there to just take the southwest. No problems there. Mm -hmm. I mean, Felthos already kind of had control over that, but I mean, we saw the sponge sort of had control over the northeast in a similar fashion, and that didn't go very well for the sponge. We'll see what map is coming up next. I'm not sure what if the sponge has picked the next map. No, the sponge has not yet picked the next map. Pick a map, sponge. Alright, so when that is Alright, just waiting for the sponge to grab their map. Because they're gonna They're gonna want something probably a bit smaller given the way they were playing this game. I'm gonna guess some 8x8, probably Badlands, or... I mean, unless Sponge wants to go for something tricky, he might go for Ravaged. I don't know. Um... Yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised if it's Icy Run. <laughs> Icy Run was just picked randomly. Yeah, no, Red Comet, he's gonna play, he's gonna play sort of the, a standard like last time, he's confident in his, um, his Red, Red Comet style. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it is going to be a red comment. So we have... 
Another Red Comet match. Man, this map is popular. I've actually been meaning yeah. at some point to go through and see what what can be done to SSMF that map up to pretty fight. And make it a bit less... Yeah, well, a lot bad. of the sort of... One of the things about it is that it actually, it's actually sort of yeah, visually easy to look at as well. I mean, in, in that, you know, it's not doesn't clash too much with the... the you can see the units easily. While it I'm does, but, you know, a bit of specular time. mapping and normal mapping would go a long way, I think. Yeah, I think a, a, a more interesting texture would uh, would benefit it. And I think there's even... There's even more maps like it, which, uh, you know... Um, I think it could, there could be, be the game could benefit from having more maps a little bit like it, which are mostly sort of flat, um, with a few hills and things. Yeah, more maps like it. It's it's a comet catcher based map. There are lots of maps like it. It's like yeah, that's fair. After enough. Delta Siege <laughs> is pretty much the archetype for spring games. But uh, us playing more more maps than not this, which are similar to this, you know, because obviously it's right. a popular style. But you know, there are there are other maps which are. Which is similar, which could, you know you could also play. But I think it's 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 natural for a map which is played a lot, where players are very familiar. If a player feels like they're specialized enough on that map, like they've played enough of the, uh, enough of this map that they know it really well, that they're going to choose it as a sort of a fallback choice if they feel like they need to win a game. Even though for a map like Red Comet, um, most one versus one players are very specialized and know this map very well. But I think he just wants to fall back to standard play. Mm, which Whereas makes sense. The blue band is weird. <laughs> you know? Yeah, well, I like I said, I played it earlier. I played it before the tournament just to get an idea what the map was like. And, yeah, it is it is not very typical. That The way the start boxes are set up is just odd. It's kind of neat, but it's not something people are used to. And, yeah, I can see totally. I mean, Feltus... Oh, actually, Feltus, are they going... No, they're going to go for the same northeast setup. Same opening defensive setup. Exact same opening defensive setup as before, actually. The same Lotus placement, too. The sponge has not yet set up anything with their opening. And they're getting a couple mexes down, but I think there are several weaknesses much. actually to um uh, fail this is some um, lotus setup because you can see that the, yeah, the Lotus Nearest Commander is actually fairly far away from the solar collectors. And the which other means one you could get a radar underneath the solar collector, behind the solar collector. Yeah, I really am not much com I have no confidence in having Lotuses anywhere but adjacent to the solar collectors defending them. Yeah. And the one over the yeah. southeast has no defenses whatsoever. I mean, you could fill in the gaps with more solo collectors, but as it stands, an early raid could basically break through it. Though that is the second Lotus being built, regardless. Actually, that's the second Lotus being built, so there's quite a lot of time where that Lotus is completely vulnerable. I think he's relying on having his commander and having units coming out of his factory. I suspect him to be spamming daggers and keeping most of the daggers at home. Oh, as, as it's a July folks. game. Hover versus hover. <laughs> I think on this map, people are very familiar with the hover mirror matchup. They're you know they're confident with it. It's also a simple map, a simple matchup in that there's only so many units. Uh, a vehicle has more units, and so the units are a little more specialized. Whereas yeah. the dagger, it's what you use in the Raider game. You yeah, only have the dagger. Dagger scalpel and then halberd. You transition out of that into scalpels and mace to deal with the enemy riots. So you both, you have a perfect Raider, a perfect skirmisher, and a uh, perfect riot. And, and the, the assault unit raider. is a little bit more specialized. It's weirder and harder to use. Yeah, the Halberd is... Well, the Halberd is half Assault, half Raider, really. Given the fact that yeah, you just run it, through. Yeah, it very much is. A lot like the Ravager in that way, actually. But um, it's it's weird because of the armor bonus in that it's really good against defenses that way because it just walk up right next to them, taking no damage, and then open up on them. But it's it's worse versus... A lot worse versus, versus Raiders. So, yeah, a lot of people just rely on the Scalpel because if it's high upfront alpha damage, you can just snipe. Um, defenses one versus one, then pull uh, one on one yeah. by one, then pull back. One so yeah, it's just one thing a really strong factory. Sorry. One thing I was surprised about the scalpels though is that no one, I haven't really noticed a lot of players try to take advantage of the reload time. No, what? pause. No, anyway, oh, I see this bunch is having lag issues again. Anyway, yeah, the reload time seems like if you were playing, say, Cloaky versus Hover, and they have a bunch of scalpels, you could run with a few glaives, cause them to fire. And then run into the rest of your force as all the scalpels are reloading, and you have ten seconds. That's definitely, that's definitely a really good idea. I mean, you can do that with um in hover hover, hover map up, and I expect to see that, or well, I hope to see that. Maybe they just play sort of a more traditional style, but to, to see just a single halberd to waste all the scalpel shots. Yeah, and that would work too. Yeah, it's, it's it's really easy to do, and you can do it with a raider as well. So, but we have the sponge has a has really rushed out a ton of daggers here. He's going to try yeah. and just 
go down his throat and do as much damage with these as possible. And this time he's not running into the enemy commander. Oh, is the oh okay. At this point, the sponge is basically stalled. So the sponge is very much reliant on these daggers being alive because there's okay. The stall seems to be over, but yeah, it's pretty much it's stalling. This is a rush. This is an all-in. I'm surprised mm. actually that the sponge is going for this. Oh, okay, not quite an all-in because there is some expansion going on in the south, and the commander does have the priority, so they are basically trying to not die completely. But this is very close to an all-in. He's going to recover economically, but you can see it's stalled out any expansion by the quill. The quill is now leapfrogging defenders, and the oh, commander yeah, is pulling nice. back from the from the rear to start expanding forward. Okay, it's not um, quite an all-in. The sponge is actually being really clever here, going around the sides. He's visible on radar but he's going to try and get in the back and do something there, but it's not really going to work because there's almost equal numbers of daggers now. Yeah, he's pulling back. He realizes what's oh. up. Well, trying to pull back, but pulling back through Feltas' dagger line. Feltas having made a really good choice in intercepting. I mean, it's like, not kills all of them, kills half of them. Does not... Well, basically stops the entire raid. So at the very least, yeah, it does was... put a bit of pressure on Feltas. You're right, the defenders, that slows things down. The sponge gets a slight advantage economically which may be all that's necessary at this point. And the sponge also being fairly clever, setting some lotuses in advance along the center west side, not relying on basically any sort of lines in front, assuming that Feldhaus is going to be able to harass from the side. Yeah, this is um, very much the difference in their styles and the way Feldhaus has been playing uh, and the way his opponents have been reacting to him. The sponge is relying on scaring him with a very large uh, dagger ball. It hasn't done much damage. It could have done a lot more damage than it did, but unfortunately it hasn't. But it's keeping uh, fails to the Actually, back, I don't know. The North, the North is dealing a huge amount of damage right now. Getting a couple of metal extractors, possibly. Or the daggers are. No, the daggers going to stop. Never mind. Got one. No, that was even. a pretty good raid. He got a few defenders. He got. A f he didn't lose too many of his daggers. And yeah. he, but he's keeping Felthas on the defense. Felthas has his daggers sitting on top of his constructor. Well, look at the sponge's constructor. The sponge's constructor is just it made, built a, uh, a laser tower completely unmolested, and is now expanding with. Uh, with uh, metal attractors, oh, actually, yeah, there's only two laser towers for the sponge on the entire map right now. And Felthas, which is how many Felthas has in his base? Felthas has in his base, Felthas has in the center expansion, Felthas has over to the north. I mean, there are three pairs of lotuses that are pretty much close enough to... Well, actually, sorry, that one over right in the center could be used for pretty much anything. But the rest of them, yeah, you're right, Felthas... I mean, I was going to point out that Raid did look pretty good with the sponge, but at the same time, that is still... That's a fair amount of metal that was donated. Not enough, I don't think, to make the raid not worthwhile, but still, it was one thing to point out. The sponge did donate about 150 metal. Felthas with his, um, uh, is, is behind on metal now, so the sponge's naked expansion is really paying off. It's actually um, paying off quite well, but he doesn't have enough energy to spend it all, so he's desperately trying to get up enough energy now. And this is the point where Felthas' sort of slow, meticulous expansion with enough energy to support it is starting to pay dividends because now he's now the reclaim raiding can be used. the naked expansion. Because all that reclaim yeah. is what's giving parity, but even then that can be used. Now, the sponge losing that naked expansion, that is a big problem. Although, that was a nice counterattack by Felthas. Very good timing there, though. The sponge pushes it back, but the raid was still wonderful. Loses only two daggers at the cost of three mexes. Although, actually, no, getting me more daggers. Felthas dropping the daggers, dropping control of them, allowing but Felthas he's, to... He's doing this within the range of a bunch of defenders, though, so he's just losing. Ah, yes, he's the losing way too many of his daggers. Same place as before, too, actually. Feldhaus is playing this very much the same as before, despite the difference in factory and the difference in the Sponge's playstyle, compared to what Feldhaus was facing before against Orphelius. Yeah, I think he um, I think he feels confident playing this way, with his support commander and the defender creep down the map. And with because there's, you, you have such a strong raider, and to get a mace up, maces are actually pretty expensive, so to transition into oh, uh, riot a... units or... Yeah, not that over. Right over to the northwest. Pretty strong raid over the northwest, and that quill is completely undefended. The sponge got a bit overconfident. This needs to move back to the lotus. This quill needs to move yeah. back. It has no time to do so, and the sponge doesn't even know. Actually, yeah, the sponge does not know. Completely blind to that. Just now sees it, and does the sponge react to it? Yes, the sponge is looking at that. No, 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 the sponge is a bit too far south. Does not notice it in time. That is going to he's pulling, be way He's too pulling his, his, his daggers back, and um, he's That's gone, gonna be to, he's gone to an air factory now. Yeah, but doing so that gives Felthas So he needs to make the, the air factory work. Yeah, because otherwise Felthas has just been given a massive opening to break through that southern expansion. There's hardly any defenses anymore, and Felthas has taken advantage of it too. Realizes that that opening has been made. 
Of course, the Ravens are still a problem, but now the sponge is going to take about 10 seconds to get down here. And Feltos is already in position, takes out a Mex, goes for the commander directly, and it's a recon comm too, but no, not even goes to the commander. Doesn't even bother, just tries to take, get rid of all the metal extractors. And now the sponges yeah. and daggers are back in position, but that was still two metal extractors that did not need to be lost. So that was a good scare by Failthos. Pulled the sponge back and opened up the front. But Failthos can catch the sponge with their pants down. Oh no, he's, he's, he's oh, running no, daggers. Not again. Right into the this is again now. another obvious defense attack. He has, he has halberds here, which should be tanking the damage, which I think was his plan, but he moved them in wrong. He's going to try and snipe the commander, I think, right now. Yeah, he is. Okay, there we go. So that at least, that will help someone. That'll block off Hiltos' expansion attempts. But still, those halberds, he once lost again, two ravens there. those halberds are in fire at will mode. I keep saying this. Put them in hold fire mode. Go into, go into initial states and make them always in hold fire mode. That is something that any player should do. I think that in this case, versus the, um, yeah, Falthus is now switching out into maces and things, and he's becoming a lot more aggressive. Hopefully the uh, ravens from the sponge will be able to snipe the, um, in, oh the, yeah, maces. No, the maces. Well, the ravens won't have a problem, though. The sponge is, well, they're still pushing out daggers pretty heavily. That's all they're pushing out. Yeah, well, it looks like a raid sponge, counter -attack. The Although, sponge doesn't have enough land army right now. Um, although both of them have pretty much depleted no, they, their entire land army, so if there's any time to expand it right now. The sponge has two idle constructors sitting in the middle of the map that he should be reclaiming and expanding with right now. But um, uh, Thalthus, Thalthus needs to get his constructors working as well because he just lost his commander and his commander was a lot of his build power. He's using his constructors to continue that long line of defenders down the middle of the map. And I think um, I think the sponge had a good idea in going for halberds. Um, as long as Thalthus, he can keep Thalthus's dagger ball under control, he can plow through those um, defenders in the middle of the map with, the, with halberds. But on the whole... He might want to kind of ignore it and bomb, and well, bomb that's what, that's what and they're doing. around the sides. The sponge yeah, is just doing is exactly that, going to the north, going along for the flank. I mean, there's some swifts trying to take that out, but ultimately that's not going to do much. The dagger's just going to kill the swifts, probably. And yeah, daggers are excellent against And swifts. actually, the sponge has twice as many daggers in this area than Feldhaus does, and the defender's just being set up now. Although, unfortunately, that line was poor. That was terrible line. The sponge regrouping, getting to a better position, but at this point, there's no local advantage. And the sponge... Did deal a bit of damage, but cannot deal... No, no, that was bad. Lost all the daggers. And the halberds are nowhere to be found. The ravens are also kind of just hanging out. Four ravens left. But this defender line should be flanked from the south. There's nothing over to the south. The ravens go to the south, take out some of the lotuses, and then go to the, straight to the main base. Not enough to snipe the factory quite yet, but getting pretty close, actually. There's six ravens so far... Oh, no, wait, that's... Three ravens so far for... The sponge and three for fail. Th sorry, four for the sponge and three for fail. Thus, yeah, there was a window there where he had um, uh, when he was still naked expanding, where his commander took the three metal extractors in the middle of the map, where he actually had more metal than he needed to use, um, where he could have Not for an then switch. defended his expansion and stopped an attack, and but then fail. realized he started raiding and. The sponge lost his naked expansion, basically, and it's put him quite behind. Wonderful raid, Although, though, by the sponge coming around the bottom. Yeah, I think that the sponge is actually going to have no problem, though, because at this point, they're still fairly even. The sponge has twice the army size by cost. No, the sponge might lose his commander. Oh, crap, that commander has been morphed, too, just for beam laser, yeah. but still, that is that is a blow. But despite that, the sponge still has a, a military advantage, and economically, uh, very near parity. The Not sponge is pulling back his, um, his daggers, though, which is... Kind of a shame. Uh, yeah, actually, that's, there's a laser tower which has only just got finished going up. Oh, that is going to flank Feltos' yeah. daggers quite nicely. Yeah, he does have still a military advantage because Feltos is invest invested so heavily in those static defenses. He really needs something to kill the defenders. Though. Well, a couple halberds do the trick. I mean, if that if it comes to us, it was a penetrator. If Feltos, if the sponge is feeling really confident, but yeah, a couple halberds do the trick. Maybe some maces. I don't think the sponge cares about that though. The sponge is going straight for the main base. Not even focusing on that at all. Getting rid of the ravens. Getting rid of the daggers. They got twice as many daggers, and it's just a matter of making sure the daggers don't kill each other more than anything. And that is actually it's, not working out that well. It's working out okay. The sponge looks like he's, they he's will be able to get much. He's, he's distracting this, but he needs to have a backup plan. Excuse me, a backup plan. He's expanding with the constructor on the left side while this is happening, but he's just losing all his daggers in the enemy base. Yeah, and that was just... a lot of metal donated, and that pretty much brings military to parity. 
Because at this point, the military advantage is primarily the Ravens. And there's only about four of those. There's still only four of those that belong to the Sponge. And they haven't been used at all. They're not trying to take out the Defenders. They're not trying to take out any of the Mexes over to the Southeast. They're not trying to take out the Lotuses that were really pushing a lot of hurt on those Daggers. There's really not much going on, honestly, that failed us can't respond to because the sponge is not dealing with the responses in advance. Although halberds yeah, are coming in though. The halberds, yeah, finally. They are coming in, but I don't know how well this is going to work. One of the halberds is basically going to die without too much resistance because they have started firing. Is that still kind of tricky? You have to be careful with the micromanagement on those halberds because once again, they fire, they are no longer defended. It takes a little while for them to get back in defense mode. The daggers trying to do what they can, but even then, it's like, put the ones you don't need that are damaged in hold fire mode. So they don't die. I mean, it's a really tricky micro, but at this point, that's necessary. Yeah, it was an we're talking if, he, if he continue to do that and then make a mace or two, which he can retreat back into, you need to keep them beyond the line of the defenders because maces will go down pretty quickly to that mm -hmm. many defenders. But if he can build either a defense line or a mace line, uh, he might be able to do something. But, um, yeah, um, halberds are not great against enemy raiders. Oh, but, oh, nice use of daggers, though. Veldas' yeah, line completely taken by surprise. Five daggers for nothing. Oh, no. Four daggers nothing. Five daggers for one. That was a really nice shot there. Perfect timing by the sponge. Although, admittedly, the Ravens coming in here will be able to take out all of those daggers, but I think one of them is going to go down in the process. No, you not quite. The, uh, you can Close see it's down. become an air war now, where they're investing most of their economy into air units. By a wide margin. But it looks like... Veldas. It, this is going to be the, the, the decisive battle to decide who's going to take control of the air. I think the sponge and is going to lose it. Yeah, the, the Hawks are doing what they can, but even then... Those, I think no, the, the sponge has a good chance. He's fighting oh, over his maybe. own territory rather than fighting over the enemy's um, defenders. That's true, so at least the reclaim yeah, can go to them. Yeah, this looks good. More, oh, more oh, yeah, it's working out. In. He's won it. Wow, nicely done. It's kind of hard to tell, of course, with air wars. But yeah, that that's true. The sponge has managed to take air control. Nicely managing to get... That advantage of the Hawks, I guess because the remaining Hawks came from Failthoss a bit too late, I suppose. He needed that to have done out. that, though, because uh, Failthoss has this huge defender line, so the Sponge actually needs to win the air advantage with fighters in order to not start getting just bombed. And Whereas Failthoss, even though the Sponge has the air well in his control now, he can't really do much against yeah, Failthoss. He needs to start bombing the bottom of the map, which is laser turrets right now. Because that's the only thing that's really vulnerable, because at this point... The Sponge, yeah, they have air control, but that's only over about two-thirds of the map. The third of the map that Felthos controls, that cannot be penetrated easily. Not directly, at least. Yeah. We Although see a lot of Halberds coming up. They've already been spotted, and the daggers are moving to intercept. The, the Sponge should intercept them. with his own daggers and get an advantage right here, because, yeah. Like that, that the Sponge's daggers could to... rip them apart. Pincer! If he was, if he knew... Go for the Pincer! They're going right to a choke mm. point. Get the Pincer and then kill the daggers. That will. There we go. There we go. The Sponge is taking on all those daggers from Felthos. All of them going down, and Halbert's coming in here to take care of the Lotuses, just to clear the path for the Daggers. Actually, going to harass themselves, why not? I think the Sponge yeah, managed this to take this back, although admittedly the northwest side not taking advantage of the air control that they have. The Sponge really let that go and dropped the northeast side, while the southwest side, sorry, southeast side, northwest is, is the Sponge's southeast side for Felthos, taken out pretty heavily by those Halberds. All of them are going this to be going out. This is perfect from the sponge. As I was saying at the start, you do not see many people using halberds primarily in, in a hover composition. But this is just showing the strength of halberds and showing how good they are. He's overextending now, though. He needs to pull back. He ah. cannot fight maces. No, but unfortunately, yeah, that's, no, that's should not death be already. And I'm a bit surprised that these oh, these daggers could be following up. Well, actually, they couldn't really follow that easily along a different side. Not he the took out one position. of the maces, which is the best result he could get. But that's only that's less than two halberds. So he, he could have yeah. pulled that, that back and saved it, but he's, he did really well. He took out a huge well, amount of economy Well, the entire is gone. And he swung the... Uh, he, he would have swung the economy back on his, in his favor, if not for the fact that Faelthus was reclaiming so heavily now. Well, at this point, that's the thing the Sponge needs to do, too. There's an idle con right in their base, right in the center. Once again, brought up the same spot as last time. That is just not reclaiming. And there's... How much reclaim is here? There's 3,000 Medal of Reclaim in the Sponge's territory uncontested territory. Yeah, that is I huge. think that's... Um, I now, okay, I there's everything we're, going on, but not much. No, not even. It's, we're really it's rebuilding the mechs. That's all it is. We're really seeing the Sponge play. It, it, he's playing a really excellent um, sort of naked expand, unit-focused game to counter the fail this is incredibly defense-heavy game, but his economy is just not quite as strong. He's not taking um, 
He's not taking the cl reclaim quite as yeah. aggressively. He, he's giving away more units than he should when he could just pull back. Especially and given that he's... now... Sorry. Yeah, no, he, there's the bottom of the map, which he needs to take in order to stay in parity. He needs to take sort of that bottom the bottom part of the map, which is not heavily defended. Certainly, and the thing is, not just that, Felthos... Felthos is catching up. Felthos has gotten military parity once again. I was about to say, Felthos has about double the economy, meaning that the sponge really has to take advantage of both the fact that they have... They had the higher military advantage, but also just the timing, because as it's going right now, the Sponge is doing a great job keeping their military alive while dealing damage. They're being quite efficient with it, except for that loss of halberds. But now it's starting yeah, to turn around. On the top. Yeah, that that's huge. The, the halberds coming in here. They managed to get rid of a couple defenders, and the dagger is trying to deal with them, but actually not doing a great job. And they are pulling back nicely. So that was a much better raid than the one in the main base. A couple of, four halberds have been lost. If they just stop attacking, they should be able to get out of there just fine, but they are continuing to attack, unfortunately. That is not quite as effective, but still, more reinforcements coming in by the sponge. And Felthos goes for the north assault, though, figures that they have the position advantage, and yes, they do, in fact. The sponge is going around the ha south, and he's going to run into a Stardust, which is just finishing, which is ah. going to be really devastating. Well, we'll see, though. That Stardust is being surrounded quite nicely, and actually is only going to kill about three or four daggers it's before going to explode, down. and it might kill... Oh, mm. sheesh. A dozen yeah. daggers go down in total, thanks to that the Stardust explosion. That was painful, especially given that daggers didn't have to be that close. And now Raven is yeah, finishing off careful. those daggers. But at the same time, the Halberd to the north, still getting rid of the raid. I mean, the raid was partially successful. But given that Philthos has the economic advantage, that was much more successful than it looks. However, yeah, those Halberds in the middle of the map, there are no enemy um, units in position. If the Sponge sent his Halberds in right now, he could clear out all of those defenders and, and the, the game, um, heavy laser tower. And that would that would um, really really help. But it. He's, he's pulled them back, unfortunately. I don't think he realizes because actually, Felthus right now doesn't have any daggers that are in position to oh. stop that. He only has maces, which will slowly move in, and then he can just move his his halberds away, walk down the line while being chased by the maces, and pull out again. Well, the problem is that the sponge has no radar up front. I mean, there's that hill right in front of the main base, kind of in the center, right in the center, slightly south. That would be perfect place for radar. But right now, Felthus basically has all the knowledge advantage and the sponge does not know anything that's going on. They know that there are defenders there, but they don't know that basically everything else is open. You're right. It's just, it's not seen. And I think the sponge has lost a lot of confidence given that northern raid and the fact that the southern raid was pretty heavily pushed back. Felthus is just building more and more and more defenses and he has enough of the map that he can afford to just build defenses on that and win. Whereas the sponge is doing excellent with his military. He's getting uh, local superiority, he's trading well, he's raiding well, and this is keeping him in the game, but ultimately, if he doesn't kill the defenses and dislodge um, the sponge from the middle somehow, um, I would I would suggest a, a stiletto at this point, a Thunderbird. Yeah, that he's a good attack along the south, using the bombers excellently. Actually, a Thunderbird along the defenses would work nicely, it, for confidence and nothing else. Although, at this point, air control is going over to fail. Th oh, yeah. Air control's kind of, at least locally, to fail to us. The sponge trying to take it back, but fail to us going to run back into the defenders and keep those hawks alive. At this point, the hawks are stockpiling, too. And fail to us can easily just build up that air without being concerned about it being attacked as it's building up. However, Halberd's coming from the south, and that will be fairly effective. They are going up for the defenses. However, the maces are being too much of a problem. And the the bombers are too are spread out. They're getting picked out off because of the extra range of the maces. They're just opening up and instantly getting picked off by the by the um, maces. This is the point where losing that many, losing the um, bombers just there, losing that many halberds, he's lost a lot of his military advantage. And yeah, I think he knows he's lost. Definitely. That is game. Not even a GG. Just game. Wow, that was. That was an intense game. That was definitely very even, except for that and that end swing thing. It's just the sponge almost had it, but yeah, that those defenses really just put weight. I think the sponge was feeling very underconfident because of those defenses. There was no easy way to break them. I mean, I know that feeling all too well. It's like you're just you you're staring down this wall of defenders, and it's like there's there is a way to break through it, but you keep feeling like you're gonna try to break through it, and then counterattacks come in. Are you gonna try to break through it, and it turns out you didn't have enough? There was even larger wall defenses behind it. And just trying to deal with that becomes very intimidating. Yeah, both the Sponge and Aurelius are saying that Felthus is really heavy defensive hover, ho hovercraft with 
um, uh, dagger play with these really heavy defenses where it's just really impossible to dislodge them. It's very frustrating to play against, which I can imagine. Yeah, because trying to dislodge defenses, like at that point you start to think, should I build hammers? Should I build a missile silo? It's like Yeah, I was looking at that thinking, this needs some napalm or something. Because at that point you're just thinking, because when you, at least when you're playing against someone who's of lower skill, I remember when I was starting out and I was playing against some other players who were at the time like around 1450 yellow, and they're going heavy defenses, and I was just told, build a nuke silo. Because at that point you just <laughs> smash their defenses, or build hammers, but I mean, at this level, it's hard to really convince yourself to do that because of the fact that those units basically only kill defenses. Well, Missile Silo not so much, but the Hammers basically kills defenses. Anything else just moves is, too fast. Yeah, a Penetrator is not, not an entirely bad option. A Penetrator by that point, I mean, I, I mentioned it jokingly earlier in the game, but yeah, by the point where those Halberds were coming in, one Penetrator would have been about three Halberds, I think. That the problem with the penetrator is that it works best when it's behind a heavy defense line. When you've got AA there, when you've got um, uh, you know a lot of defense so that he can't dive in on the penetrator yeah, and kill so it. Yeah, it's should have gone for the penetrator. <laughs> that's well, the yeah, problem, that's yeah. kind of the problem. It's really good against defenses, but it's really good against defenses when you're from used from behind defenses. So you kind of need to match the enemy's amount of defensive power. While well, with some of the factories with uh, sort of lower level um, artillery, t artillery units, Say the Impaler from the vehicle factory mm -hmm. is really strong. It has huge range. It's really it's, it's hard to spot. It's hard to snipe. Has a fair amount of hit points. It can be, put, it can be pulled back and be it's fast. It can be used with an army. So it's sort of even though it is itself expensive, it will snipe the um uh, it will snipe those uh, defenses on at a time. But again, unlike the Penetrator, which can be used against units, it's purely anti-defense and it is better in that role. Oh, anyway, anti-defense unit. 